currently very deep in the editing process, trying to get some stuff out for the Menace and the Man, yeah. Menace to People. A lot of content. Yeah. But I'm, I've been backed up on content for so long. What about what about the bedroom? You backed up there too? About the what? The bedroom? Nah, things are flowing well there. We're doing good there. <laughs> but Dennis Bermudez, it's good to see you. Stan the man. Dennis the Menace Bermudez. Uh, Episode 130. Uh, yeah. You didn't watch yeah, Jared Cannonier versus Marvin Vittori, right? Uh, what did I have? This Oh, you know what? My kids have lacrosse tournament? Is that why? Big lacrosse players. I talked about this. But well, no, I didn't get around. What was it on? Was it on uh fight? Was it a, a free? Well, actually no, no fights are free anymore, right? You either have to have you have to have ESPN plus. ESPN plus, yes. I think they were on ESPN as well as ESPN Plus. Great fight, though. They put on a fight Dennis Bermudez would have been proud of. Marvin Vittori was Rocky Balboa. Took a beating. Okay. You know when guys blow their wad a little bit? Yes. He caught uh, Jared Cannonier early. And kind of like oh. had that moment of like, oh, I might get the finish right now. And then just it didn't. Then Cannonier caught him and then just turned into just a bloodbath, a war. Where does Vittori train? Vittori used to train at Kings. And now right. I believe he relocated to Las Vegas. Okay. And then Cannonier, is he still with uh, Ben? The MMA Anderson lab, or? I believe. Yeah, Benson. So great fight, but they're both not there for a title shot. And then what's his name? Adesanya acknowledged the fight. The MMA world acknowledged the fight. Everyone except for Dennis Bermudez, you know, caught that one. It was a pretty good one. But the kids. But maybe you, maybe you'll watch it. Thing is, the thing is, here's here's what we do here at the Man of the Man. You watch all the fights, and then you pretty much give the fans that watch our show a recap of the fights by telling me what happened in the fight. Precisely. What do you mean? That's what we just did. I know, but we don't have to call me out. I was giving you a layup to be like, oh, yeah, with the kids, with the kids, and this is what I was doing. Well, that's what I said. The kids have lacrosse performance. Yeah. Speaking of kids, oh, there. speaking of kids, here, here's a great segue there because we didn't, you didn't watch the event. It was every UFC event's always great, but you know, Cannoneer Vittori was the headliner, two of our past guests. So we did a little bit of that, but Conor McGregor on to kids. Not only is the Mrs. Pregnant, you saw the day that these charges come out of whatever grape charges he has coming out, he was posting pictures of him like kissing the new baby that's in the wife's belly. So is this his third kid or fourth kid? Third kid, I believe. So here, He's... I don't have kids. I'm not going to say you did it. I don't know what you did. I'm not going to say anyone else that I know did it. But I know when a guy is with a girl and she's pregnant, it's happened. That's a time when infidelity or stepping out or cheating or whatever you want to call it might happen. Yeah. But this is different. This is Connor being charged criminally with something. Pulling. I'm gonna go. I'm going baloney. Baloney. One, baloney. You said. Yes. Go. Yes. One heavier good girl, right? Two. Is she of African descent? Is she what? Is she? Black? I think she was white. White chick? Okay. Because the, the the memes I've been seeing is like, Connor likes Lizzo, and I'm like, is that because the girl was fat and black, or... I think that's just a fat joke. Okay. Um, I, I like I like what you said, that maybe he was looking for a little booger sugar, she's like, I got some, he's like... Oh. Well, you're giving me some. Come with me. Connor, I heard you like Coke. Love Coke. Well, you got some? Got some right mm -hmm. here. Let's go in the bathroom right now. 
versus you look good. Connor is a multi-millionaire, generated billions, could have supermodels. He's at the so he's at the well, here's, here's, NBA finals. With that, said, with that being said, I think this girl, like he talks to me. I can get money. He's and I'm saying, wait, touch wait, me whoa, like this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Touch me like whoa, this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He touched me, or the way it's looking, he spit on me. Not he touched me. So the story that she's coming out with is that he was trying to get hard and like spit on his hand and spit on her. And that's the story she's going with. She has submitted her clothes to the police and said, you're going to find his spit, his DNA on these clothes. Okay. Here's, if I'm his lawyer, he's drinking, he's at a club, he's yelling, like, Slive is going to come out if he, if he spoke to her. You know what I'm saying? It's tough because Connor is a superstar. He's villainized right now because he does do cocaine. He does drink. He does party. He's a wild man. He's out there. He just hurt the the, the same game is when he. So you, they're telling us right now that the same game that Connor hurt the mascot, punched the mascot, sent the mascot, the Miami Heat mascot to the hospital. He then went upstairs and grabbed some girl in the bathroom. So Connor's on a rampage is what they're trying to depict. Mm-hmm. I've been telling you. I told you. I told you that last episode. Every time I've seen him for the last two years, he's been drinking. They have a narrative that they could play. What sounds? Yeah. What sounds more likely? That and if Connor comes out that he did do it, and they have hard evidence, I will then denounce myself and the whole situation and be like, "Yo," because that's a terrible thing to do to anyone. It should never happen. But. What sounds more likely, that Connor was trying to do drugs with the girl in the bathroom or some type of conversation transpired? Maybe she, he wasn't interested and this is her way to, you know, oh, you don't want to, you know, I threw myself a Connor McGregor. He kind of made me feel like shit. I can go this route. Or totally into it, arcs, you know, has a go at him and then is like, you know what? He's married, got a kids come in like he'll never be my boyfriend or husband so let me get a payday that's a route too Connor McGregor does not have to rape people doesn't doesn't and they're going to try to spin like he's some madman that he does or now he will. here's why people would say he raped me you get paid supposedly I mean it's not I don't think this is rocket science here the girl said that the NBA offered her a hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand dollars. I saw that. You saw uh, that. Shut up. Or some which way that got leaked because I don't know if the girl's releasing her identity or she's being kept secret. And then that makes me think of something that I saw with the Tate brothers, where they were saying they're in the same situation where they're getting charges like this, and the girls get all anonymity, but the man being Conor McGregor or being. Andrew Tate or Tristan Tate, your name gets dragged through the mud with like the worst criminal charges possible. Uh, Right. And it's kind of like, I've told you this in the past, like with media, I don't have to retract anything I say unless the person I said it about comes after me. Like I could say all types of stupid shit. If the person I say it about never hears it or their people never hear it, and they never come at me to say, yo, you got to take that down. It's not true, or I'm going to sue you. I don't have to take it down. That's just the fucked up way the world works. Right. So it's the same thing here. Like, you don't have to, you could say anything. Now, she came out on social media and said that Connor did this, or she went to the police and said it, or? She went to the NB, to the security at the arena. And then apparently the NBA representatives that were at the Heat game spoke to her, Connor Security. Loose details of the story have come out. Because again, what they do is you can accuse someone of something and then your identity, story, a lot of the details remain secretive or anonymous or don't get disclosed. But Connor McGregor is a rapist or, you know, a sexual abuser and... He's not. I'm telling you, he's not. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think he's too successful. And the way I would say, and then someone like, could take. Like, like another scenario, this happens. 
Kobe Bryant. Yeah. He didn't rape anybody either. I think there's been a lot of athletes that it's happened to. I think Conor McGregor could be a victim of that. Because right they're now. dollars or people think they have money or, you know what I mean? Could be a victim or of that. Or they feel rejected or, or whatever it may be. We hope he's so a victim. They did hook up and they're like, let me burn this guy down because he's a well, cheater. we I'm hope like, he's a victim of that. Like Tupac, Mike Tyson, they were other yes. people that come to mind where they were convicted, put in jail, claimed innocence, have told stories of innocence. There's details from other people's stories that prove their innocence or depict their innocence. So it, it's it's a slippery slope. But that's where Conor McGregor is right now. So him versus Michael Chandler, that's something you said to me when I was bringing this up earlier today when we spoke, is, yeah, he missed the USADA deadline. I think they're in a hole. Like 2023. They're in a pro a whole thing with that. I think Connor's ego, his Connor's ego, Connor's authority was challenged in that whole thing. Like UFC has their hands full with that right now. Past right. his criminal even charges even, or anything even, like that. Even when he said he plays, like I'll give you two tests. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> you can't tell them any tests you're gonna give them. So you know what that is? That's yeah. You saw to sent me a pamphlet. They sent me a packet. They sent me a whole guidelines. I got my own guidelines. You know, I right. got a different way it's going to go. I mean, now also a way smaller draw got the pass in Brock Lesnar. Remember when he fought Mark Hunt and then yeah. Pop there, there's other stories of people getting the pass a little bit too, I believe, but it's just, it's the whole thing got made too high profile. The media asking Dana about it. Dana saying, I got nothing to do with you, Saad. I'm staying out of that one. I'm sure Connor made a phone call and probably didn't get his way. Or I don't even who knows. If who knows? Who knows? Connor's leaving us all in the dark right now. It could be, you know what? I'm on the gear right now. I feel so fucking great. Not gonna stop. That's why now, I said I'll give you two also, tests. There's also like if people are talking about him like, like he may never fight again. Uh, yeah. Well if he entertains this idea of fighting for another ten years. You know how much money he'll acquire in that 10 years of just, like, keeping people on their, on their toes and talking about them, and he's just going to keep... Well, from what I understand, he cashed out again not too long ago. He sold Proper 12. Right, but he still carries it around and stuff like that, so he might kind of have a deal similar to Dana in that he's still, like, a partial owner. Oh, no, he, no, no, he's still fully involved. I'm saying he's... He cashed out another big chunk with Proper 12, like sold stake. That he, and I know he's still involved, still owns stake. That I'm saying doesn't need to fight. Right, right, right. Like if they're like Connor, you got to stop smoking weed, you got to stop doing coke, and you got to stop drinking. It's the only way you're going to get to fight. He might be like, you know what? Who are you going to have me fight in eight weeks? We we're going to have you fight. Hang on. He's also big enough. Where he might be like, I just might go Floyd Mayweather route. I'll be all geared up, start my own sanction, and just have people come fight me for a bunch of a huge bag of money that I know I can beat. He will never get out of the UFC contract. Uh, He'd have to fight out his UFC contract, or the UFC would have to be involved. Like he, I think you know, it's Connor. Which? It's Connor. Connor could go to Dana tomorrow and say, Dana, my leg's not up to it. I got a box. Let's go make some money in boxing. And Dane would be like 100%. Yeah. But so, yeah, that'll be our segue to the next one. But so Conor McGregor, I think he's innocent. I don't think he did Thanks. anything. Thanks. So. And then even to go there, I think the Tate brothers are innocent. I don't think that you have, you don't know enough about it, but everything I've seen. Yeah. Wrongfully accused men. It's a, it's a slippery slope that men are out here dealing with. You know, it's actually Mental Health Men's Awareness Month or something like that. Oh, is that right? It is, yeah. And then we got Conor McGregor, our, our biggest spokesperson in combat sports out here going fucking nuts. Yeah, maybe even for like, and and Tate and Conor are, are men's men, if you will. The right? men, They are. What do you mean? They're 100% men's men. So even if you don't know Andrew Tate like that, you... I. You have seen his content. Oh, it's come across your thing, and you're like, I agree with it, you know? Yeah. The same I as... Guess, 
The media, it's the media. The media is the problem. Like when Dana hates the media the way Dana hates the media, I hate the media the same way. I've told you that's why Menace and the Man exists. That's why I want to do this shit because I've seen how the media is. The media is terrible. They'll spin a narrative. They'll edit clips. They'll change the whole fucking story to tell it. If they don't like Dennis Bermudez, they'll spin the story to tell to tell it the way that it makes it look, you know, Dennis Bermudez look bad. Right. It's also why I'm running for mayor eventually, because I've seen politics and I've seen the bullshit. I've told you. I like that. So, but my what segue. Hang you on, you have five seconds to come up with a slogan for Stand the Man. Go. Five seconds. We're not just cleaning up locally, we're cleaning up America. Wow. Yeah. That was pretty good. And that was just, I, I never said that before, never thought of it. So, but my segue there was going to be. Uh, well, no, you're going to be like, I'm a carpenter and I'm going to fix, not only am I going to fix this this neighborhood, I'm going to fix the country. And then they'll be like, we heard what you said on Menace too. And I'll be like, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But, but I was going to segue. I don't, I forget what I said and I should have just segued then, but we kept talking. But Francis Ngannou, John Jones. Right. The PFL. That guy, so who was who was John Jones cornering? Maurice Green. Okay. You know that dude? Who he yeah, he fought. He either fought on the fought same Volante. card as me or he fought Volante. He fought Volante. You pro- oh, probably the same card, too. I, if, I At some point, maybe toward the end. But he fought Which, Volante. Saw, saw John Volante today. Yeah. So we're going to have him on the show eventually, and we'll talk about today, how it went. Heavyweight Volante. You know what? He looked thinner now than he did then in when he fought. Fight. That's what I thought when I saw him at uh, Serra's not too long ago. But yes. so, John Jones is there, corner and Maurice Green. The PFL advertises it and says, like, yo, John Jones is going to be here tonight. You know who else is going to be here? Francis. Something might happen. They were advertising this. No, I saw it. that. John Jones will be in attendance, in attendance and so will Francis Ngannou. What, Which, is, what are you trying to do, PFL? Get this guy beat up? So so last week, you guys had Deontay Wilder there. There's a chance that he could fight Deontay Wilder. You guys could put that fight together. You don't have fucking... You don't have him there. You have Lance Wade hanging out with Deontay. You could have had... Lance Wade instigating Deontay and Francis. Like, yo, Deontay, don't let him talk to you like that. And it would have been gold. Versus you don't have Francis show up. You just have Deontay there being friends with everybody, taking pictures. They could have had that face off. And then it's like all the place, I guess. But they could have had the Deontay versus Francis face off that they could make that fight. If that generated a buzz. Or even them just talking to each other, right? They could make that. No, no. They could make that fight. That's a fight yeah. that they could make. No. We're going to have it when John Jones is here. We're going to have Francis come out in the African getup. And we're going to have that. We're going to make sure they get a face off and they talk shit to each other, knowing there's 0% chance you can make the fight. The only way it they can make the off, fight. It started off very respectful. The only way they that- can make that fight is if Dana White buys the PFL. Or if they trade, or the PFL sells him Francis back, that fight shelved. That fight's done. Never will happen. I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was you that said it, but someone was like, "What if ESPN goes? Listen, own both you guys." But where's the fight happening? Split it. I don't know. It's happening in the UFC. They're not going to go. Oh well, we're going to do it in the smart cage. One like, well, not in the smart cage, but a. Octagon, the UFC's Octagon, the bigger company, the bigger sport, the uh, bigger UFC deal with, with the bigger the deal with ESPN. PFL started. would be left out of it. It was just good marketing for them, I guess, and they keep Nganu relevant, but they almost got Frank. Let's be real. They almost got Francis oh. beat up in the parking lot. He's not bit gonna beat up John Jones. Anyone out there who thinks he's gonna No, no, I think it's a landslide. Because John Jones hasn't even been like, what? And the people that, that that have hit John Jones pretty good are like really good elite strikers with like a setup and like a straight punch. And small, quick, 
Even if someone goes, yeah. oh, Francis is fast. We've spoken about this. The lighter weight classes, they're better. So the people who gave John problems were middleweights, quick 205ers, and Gustafsson, who was an outlier. Gustafsson at 205, it was a different animal. For sure. And then I'll say Dom Reyes, was- that version of Dom Reyes, different animal. Southpaw, tricky, was on a roll. Now would those then, guys would those guys beat Ngannou? A little bit of a, a run, no. What'd you say? Santos gave him a little bit of a run, no. For sure, but would those guys beat Ngannou? Probably not. And did they give Jones problems? Sure, but same like we were talking about last time we were speaking or last episode. You, every fighter has that at least one night, couple nights of their career where they fight down to their opponent's level. Well, there's that, and also like John Jones had been a reigning unscathed champion for so long. That was just like the preparation to get ready to compete against these guys were probably like zero. Like He's Floyd too, where if you hit him, it's like, I won the round. You hit him once. You hit him twice. Right. Like I won the round. You really didn't. You got him a few times, but he, he beat you, you know? Everything becomes magnified because he's so good and everything happens so little. But I think John Jones smokes him. The yes. heavyweight, remember we, what, what did Sean Shelby tell you that time? Like heavyweight, they had like 20 on the roster, 25 on the roster. It's the weakest division. Yes. John was champion at 205, which is a, a one of the other weak divisions, if you will. But it's a strong division still. He dominated it for 10 years. He beat the best middleweights that came up, the best heavyweights that came down. So real quick. That switching lanes a little bit, but still talking about 205 pounds. That Russian that just fought um, Yoel Romero. Nemkov. What's that guy's deal from Bellator? Yeah, he's pretty good. Somebody was like, he might be the best 205-er in any. Yes, but you know how it is, or you've heard it. We've talked about it's harder to stay champion than become champion. He's staying yeah. champion in Bellator, but if he was in UFC, those opponents would be a lot tougher. Not a lot, not not shitting on Bellator, just the it's the facts, you know, the top five, top ten. Bellator's got some good guys. Nemkov's good, but uh, who's the two hundred five champion right now? Jerry. If when Jerry comes back and Jamal Hill, Jamal Hill's good. I think people sleep on Jamal Hill. I do. I was. I used to sleep on him all the time. That's why I say it. Uh, he, he's good, though. You know what it is? Is he his everything's deceptive about him? Yeah, he doesn't look super muscular. He looks he, lanky. He, I saw a picture the other day. I was like, he looks terrible. Like he's actually, yeah. He looks terrible. The next day, he posted a picture of him. Next to a picture of the Great White Hope. So everyone else must have thought he looked terrible. He must have got a bunch of messages about it. He made a joke about it and posted himself fat and posted Damon Wayans fat from the movie Great White Hope. Right. That's part of it, though. If you are, you know it, if you're good up here, it doesn't matter what you look like so much. As long as your cardio is good, you did train for the fight. He didn't, he doesn't hit the weight room. Oh, that's his thing. It's obvious. What do you mean? Looks like he works out. He I was going to say maybe he got a fucking shitty car, uh, diet. I don't know. He might do CrossFit and stuff, but it doesn't look like he lifts weights. No. But we could wrap it up there. Jones and Ganu. They almost got Ganu beat up. You know the deal, bro. Jones had brothers. We talked about that. Arthur Jones, he said, was the brother who could beat him up. Like, you grew up with two brothers. We've talked about it before. Like, Weidman... When you have a brother and you grow up fighting, I don't know if Ngannou had brothers. I don't think he grew up street fighting in Africa. Maybe he did. Maybe I'm wrong. But John Jones been in way more street fights, has fucked up way more world class guys. Oh yeah, Francis Ngannou would be his Mona Lisa. <laughs> you wrestling every day, and then he. I told you that too. He fucked up. Like don't don't poke him. Be like hit him with the John. I respect you. I'm humble. 
I want to fight you. I think you're the best. Don't start rubbing his belly. Well, John had grabbed his muscles first and was like, okay. John said, you're all right. But then he's saying you're big. He's not saying, I don't think John said you're smaller than I thought you'd be or something like that. He was like, man, you're big. And he started going, you're fat. That's like, yo, John he, will take you with John. Like, I'm the king. John will take this. you in the parking lot right now, Francis. And imagine that. Francis is a big dude. John will fuck him up. <laughs> like people. Now you gotta, people now you gotta edit that, man. I'll beep it. People say with that fight, like people pick Francis. I'm like, what world? Francis, if there was ever a puncher's chance, it's that fight. Francis has a puncher's chance. That's it. Yes. And people think it's a good puncher's chance. It's not. Because if because Francis, what happens is he bum rushes people and like throws like a fucking crazy flurry. Nobody else, everybody else goes, everybody else just kind of backs up and goes, oh shit, and gets hit by one. John Jones go, level change, take down, thank you. Derek Lewis's yeah, footwork yeah. and movement on the feet mesmerized Francis Ngannou that he didn't throw any strikes and he was like, I I can't engage, I can't. John Jones is gonna like whoopsie do, as John calls it, like walk him into everything. If not, just take him down and fucking maul him. Bad fight for Ngannou. Bad fight for Ngannou. So that's where we'll wrap it up. Did he get the best deal? Because he's facing off with John Jones. Dana White said that they were going to guarantee him $8 million. And then I believe a cut of pay-per-view is what the deal was. That's what they were offering him. The UFC to Ngannou. That's what the UFC offered Ngannou. If I'm mistaken, someone correct me. I believe that was what I heard last. I have my notes here. The UFC's offer was that he'd be the highest paid heavyweight in history. And it was $8 million. It was a three-fight deal. He was going to get $8 million for Jones. I don't know if it was $8 million total, $8 million guaranteed, whatever. And that was after two years of negotiations. No they bo- do like doing... Maybe not the UFC, but I know other organizations go like it's the eight million dollar deal, and it's like all the fights inside that deal. No, it wasn't an eight million dollar deal. I, I remember hearing Dana very clearly say eight million for the Jones fight, and I don't know if it was. I'd have to listen back if it was guaranteed or if it was eight million pay per view included or how it was worded. But that was negotiations and meetings and stuff going on for years, and that was no boxing and no board seat. And so here's where he played that wrong because we saw John Jones. They they offered Tyson Fury a fight the other day. Dana White yeah, offered Dana White offered Tyson oh, Fury right. to fight John Jones like a week ago. Yes. yes. What happened, Francis? How come you couldn't get Dana to do that for you? It was because whatever he was doing in the negotiations, whatever was going on in the negotiations, the move was him. Working with the UFC and going, do what you did for Connor. Do that for me. Come on, boss. Let's go beat up a boxer. Let's go make some money. Let's go put ten million in your pocket, fifty to a hundred million in mine. Even though he wouldn't have made that much, but and he's like, I want thirty million. <laughs> BKFC said that he wanted unrealistic money. Francis said the guy was a bullshit artist, but apparently they had a negotiation or whatever. It just wasn't anything. Bellator said they were in talks with them. They never made an official offer because they felt like it was too much money. That was what Scott Coker said. One championship came out and said that they were going to offer him $20 million for two fights. And they said they decided to withdraw from the bidding process because it was like a back and forth. And then he said yes to the PFL deal. The PFL deal is, I believe, two to three fights. It's a high seven-figure payday. They haven't disclosed the exact amount a split of the event's net profits, a signing bonus, or a salary that he's going to serve as a brand ambassador with. He can have his own sponsors. He can box. He doesn't have an exclusive deal with the PFL. He gets a minimum salary for his opponent. Here's where that's one of the dumbest things, and people made a big deal about that. Your opponent was going to be John Jones, who was going to get $15 million. Your other opponent potentially was going to be Stipe, who was probably going to get five to ten million? So you did good getting your lesser opponent a million dollars. People glorified that and were like, "Oh, it's great." You, you, well, it's two million. Right? He's getting, he's fighting a lesser opponent and get it, helping them get money. I don't get why they made such a big deal about that. John Jones was going to get more than. Here, well, I think I think the move on that is 
just getting people that aren't superstars paid to. Wait, so are you saying right there that he's going to fight someone who's not a superstar and some random guy for $2 million? He's name someone who's I, and I want to like Francis. I do like Francis. I enjoy Francis's fighting. I don't know him personally, but even I look at it on paper. I'm like, oh, so when Francis fights, he's putting the PFL out of business. It's going to be what a ten million a ten million dollar fight that generates back a hundred thousand dollars. Banking because right they're going to give him a percentage of the event. Yeah, well, I think they're I'll get sell to that. Out, I'll get to uh, that, and then we'll wrap this up. He's not going to fight until 2024. He's going to get a pay-per-view cut, right? He's going to get a pay-per-view cut of a company that doesn't do pay-per-views. So he's going to be like the first pay-per-view or something. When he does it, people are going to be like, oh, I didn't even know the PFL was doing pay-per-views because they don't do pay-per-views. They sold him on a pay-per-view model that they don't do. They're not going to have a champion's clause. So if he's the champion, that he's not even fighting in the tournament. So how is he going to become the champion? That, that was a useless clause. Like they basically, someone got Francis down. They must have got his people away from him. And they were like, all right, we got this idiot. We got this guy. How about this, Francis? We're going to open up a company in Africa. We're going to make you the president. How many shows has the company in Africa done? None, but you're the president. Deal. Deal. Kamara Usman already got Africa MMA locked on lock. He's been doing shows. It's called AKO. It's African Knockout Championships or whatever. So why is Nganu signing a deal with the PFL to now compete against his brother, Kamara Usman? The deal made, bro, the deal made no sense every which way. But yeah, the PFL Africa, he's the PFL Africa chairman, and he gets a board seat on PFL Africa. He wanted a board so, seat. So the winner of the PFL... Heavyweight division does not get a shot at Nagano. I hope that, that they Heavy haven't team. announced that that's what they're going to do. I hope that's the route they go, but no, that's not what's happening. Now, that makes that makes sense to me, right? You win the PFL, right? So you win that million, and then the next year you get $2 million to fight for Francis. Sign him, sign him and throw him right into the heavyweight tournament. What are we doing here? If the PFL's – oh, and that's the other thing. We signed Francis to our Super Fight League. That's great. How many people are in the league? It's Francis and Jake Paul. Okay. What are we doing here? You guys, you guys are starting to sound a lot of the UFC. And here, I want to support fighters. I hope all the fighters should get the revenue share and all that. They're never going to get that unless they like unionize or form like a cohesive. Never going to happen. Everything Nganu did here didn't really help the fighters like no other fighter is going to go to the pfl right now and say i want a francis and gano deal they're going to go no or what's going to happen is the way wwf and wcw it happened years ago where guys came in and started getting big guaranteed contracts ufc is going to see that writing on the wall from the jump two or three guys are going to get it it's not going to happen they're going to come back to the ufc and they're going to be like yeah remember your old contract you're on that again that's what we're offering you. That's all you get. Remember that other company? They went out of business. I hope for the best. I hope it all works out, but I probably sound like a hater right now, but. Well, thank you, Dennis, for letting me go on that rant about Fred well, Singh's contract. I mean, at the end of the day, yes, you're, you're, you know what, but uh, it, here, some of these baseball players are getting like two hundred forty million dollars. You know what I mean? So it's like, well, Francis is. I can see what he wants, but it's not. I see not what he game. wants. He didn't get it here. He needed he better. NFL, then, dude. He needed to negotiate it better. That's that's you just helped me figure it out. That's my frustration. That's where all my anger and my it comes from. I wanted it to work out for him. He could have went about it better. He should have fought. And after his last fight, I think Aljamain should do it right now. When Aljamain fights after his last, his next fight, when he wins, in the mic. That's your moment. Your moment's not on Twitter. Your moment's not anywhere else. Your moment's right there with the mic. Like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to fight my next fight because uh, I got to work out some deals with a bunch of fighters and we got we to gotta get more of this money, guys. Do, and do we want this sport to be like the NFL, the NBA? Crowd's going to cheer. Help us. Help the fighters get more of the money. Mic drop. Thanks, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan's not going to go, 
oh my god, cover up. Joe Rogan's going to go, holy shit, I can't believe he said And it's going to become a moment. Instead, he went, you know, I fight in Africa. I do company. You know, what are you doing, Francis? Any, any fighters who hear this, hit me up. I got loads of good advice. Remember I told Caitlin Chukagian, she should have, Joanna, Joanna retired. She should have been like, Joanna, bring them titties back up to 125, girl. I got you. And drop the mic. And they would have been like, holy shit. That's Derek Lewis. There's the female Derek Lewis. Right. You know, guys, fighters got to do these things. Well, where, where, if fighters want some of your, um, your advice, where can they, they DM you on Menace and the Men? Menace and the Man and Menace too, baby. Let's go. You'll lead them to the. But we'll get back to that. We'll get to more. I and mean, even there, like, I don't even know if you have a take. I went on a total rant, rant there, but that's why. Because I made sure that I researched it and I had a page ready of Francis Ngannou's deal. Because it just it boggled my mind. I was like, how the fuck is he? Why? What are you doing? What are you doing? The greatest combat sports promoter in history is Dana White. How do you not want him involved in your boxing fight or your career or, or the next step? Like, hey, Dana, I need to have a meeting with you. We're going to sit down and we're going to talk about how I have a bunch of fighters that we want to band together and we don't want to call it a union. We're going to call it a fighters association, like the players association or something like that. Like, there's different well, ways you, you could have won- You better not lose because I will, I will cut you from the roster. There's better ways that Ngannou could have played his hand. Could have got more money, could have fought John Jones, could have gave the fans the fight they want. Now he's fighting who? We don't even know who he's fighting. Hopefully he fights for BC. I got this, right this, and I don't even care at this point. I don't care at this point. Exactly. He lost me. He lost me. If it's not, if it's not Stipe, Tyson Fury, or Jones, or or uh, Deontay Wilder, I do not give a flying fuck. Could have went to Dana and been like, Dana, I'm going to sign this. I'm going to knock out Jones, or I'm going to knock out Stipe again. And then you're going to help me get Fury or Wilder in the ring. And then he could have said. You know, he, oh. I would add one more person. I would add one more person to that. Who? That's TRT Verdun. I was just going to say that. I hope. And here's what I hope happens. Just because you made a bad decision, Francis, with your contract. And not me as a fan. You took John Jones versus Francis away from me. I hope Fabricio Verdun catches you with an up kick and triangles you. Next year. I hope that that's who they get. For BC over Doom. Yeah. And that's who he Hang fights. On, that's a big enough draw. He's got fans. He probably TKOs for Doom though. For Doom's old. Not the new for Doom, dude. Or if he's on the, the right stuff, absolutely. I'm going with for Doom, but. For Doom takes him down. You, fucking... lo- you lost me, Francis. I, I want to get Francis on the show one day. We'll try. And I'm going to tell him, you know, what, what were you thinking? Like, who, what, what, what went wrong, Francis? Because you didn't get the best deal. When's the next? And then I don't, I, I don't want to be condescending, but when's the next PFL Africa event? I could have started you PFL Africa, Francis. I could have started you Francis Ngannou's MMA show in Africa. Whatever. Good for you, Francis. I'm just a hater. But everyone, make sure you like. You've been going solo now for like 15 minutes minimum. What'd you say? You've been going in circles now for like 15 minutes now. Well, let's get out of here. <laughs> I got I still got a shower, dude. All right, hit him with your uh, send off. All right, well, see you later. <laughs>